Hi, welcome to another video. Uh, my name's Dick, and today we're going into the EOS RT. This was produced in 1989, and we're going to put a film in. I'm going to use Ilford FP4, which is a 125 ISO film, and we're going to put a 40mm lens on, which is a pancake lens, it's an EF lens, it's an EF camera. We're going to put the lens on, we're going to take it out today, we're going to do, hopefully take the whole roll of film, come back, develop it, and see how we get on. So, I'll give you an overview of the camera first. Uh, this is the EOS RT, the RT stands for real time. Uh, first things we'll do is we'll put battery in it, uh, you undo this screw here, there's a little slot if you need a screwdriver or a coin and the grip comes off like that the battery goes into into this slot here and the battery is CR 2CR5 lithium uh, just slots in, put it the right way around and it clips in and then put the grip back on, screw it back down and then if you switch it on and see that it lights up it's got information therefore the battery works and the camera is in good condition. Uh, a lens, this is just a lens cap, take the lens cap off, twist it and pull. It's an EF lens mount camera so any EF lens mount lens will will fit. This is a, what they call a pancake lens. It's a 40 mil pancake lens, and basically red dot to red dot, and twists until it clicks. So the camera itself is in pretty decent condition. It's uh, obviously a 35mm camera, you, you've got the button and the lever and the inside looks quite, uh, quite respectable. It will read the canister, so you haven't got to worry about the ISO, it will set the ISO itself. We have a dial here which is on lock. A for advance, I would imagine, and a bleeper, so you can you can make it quiet or or make it uh, bleep every time you it's it does something. You have a mode dial which you would press, and I don't know if you can actually see, but it, it's AV, and you use the wheel at the front to go through, so that's. AV which is aperture priority, you got depth of field, you got a fully manual, you got a program and you got a TV which is shutter priority. You can do nine multiple exposures basically taking a picture on the same frame so the pictures are overlapping each other. We're back down to one. On the back of the camera you have a little compartment and basically if you want when it reaches the end of the film it will automatically rewind into the canister there is a little button here which if you want to get it back into the canister when you're halfway through the roll you press that button and it will rewind there's a autofocus button and you've got a self timer in here battery check in here and the ISO manual set. It is a specialist camera in relation to the mirror. The mirror does not thick up like normal SLRs. It's, it's got a, a pellicle mirror which basically stays in place. Most of the light goes through the mirror onto the film but some of the light is diverted into the viewfinder. This makes 
the viewfinder a little bit darker than normal SLRs and basically because some of the light is reflected and the mirror does not move you're always shooting like a quarter or a half a stop slower than than a normal SLR would because of the less light getting to the film it's capable of five frames per second the camera is capable of auto exposure bracketing so basically you press the orange button and the black button and it will give you one underexposed, one correctly exposed and one overexposed uh, picture and these pictures will be taken one after the other if you press the blue button I don't know if you can actually see that the blue button and the black button simultaneously you've got 15 custom functions that you're capable capable of presetting for instance one of the custom functions is when you're rewinding into the canister you can leave a leader out you can either have it all the way back in the canister or leave a leader out which makes it easier if you if you're developing the films yourself it's also got exposure compensation which is this this button here if you press the button you can set it to plus five or the other way to minus five which is five stops of light so this camera was aimed at like professional wildlife and sports photographers there were not very many of these cameras made so it is actually a rareish camera uh, I picked this one up quite a few years ago and this is the first time that I've actually decided to use it so we're gonna like I said we're going to put the film in which is Ilford FP4 I'm going to take it out with this lens I'm not going to use any other lens just this lens and we're going to see how well it does so let's go so we've come out to take the pictures it's not a brilliant day it's not bright it's quite dull actually but hopefully we find some places of contrast we're going up onto the railway walk and then down onto the canal so i'm more hopeful with the canal than the railway walk uh, we're going to do that now and obviously when I finished I'm going to come back I'm going to develop the film and we're going to show you the results I don't know if you can hear me because I forgot the mic so I'm using the mic on the camera Uh, just to remind you, the film I'm using is Ilford FP4 and it's a 24 exposure which I'm going to try and use today. This is the scene. I'm going to try and catch you some pylons in the middle of a field with some pylons in the background as well. In this composition we've, uh, we've got an old canal boat with a bit of snow on the roof so that should add to the contrast. We've got the lock and the lock paddle. I don't know what they actually call it but obviously it's black and white so obviously that will add to the contrast. So hopefully this will be a bit more of a contrasty image so it's all to shoot, suit black and white. Uh, it'd be nice if it was a bit sunnier, a bit brighter but obviously we can't have everything so uh, 
I will pay the shot again. I'm on the boat machine, right on the end of the boat. Move it back slightly so I get the, the lock in. Just past the lock. Just past the lock is a bridge, which is a bit lower because obviously the canal is going down. So uh, we'll take the shot. It's uh, eighth of a second F16. It's, it's an eight second timer. I don't know if it does two second time. I'll have to try and work that out. So I'm going to use the film up on this lock. I'm shooting over the top of this paddle onto the other gate. The lock is full of water and basically there's a bit of snow on the bank which helps add a bit of contrast. The sun is hiding behind the cloud but it is still quite bright so we'll take the shot. One sixth of a second F13. Eight second timer. There we are. I've got. I can hear a buzzard somewhere. I've got to say this this camera is extremely quiet. So for street photography, it will be ideal. in the lock. <laughs> uh, well that's it, it's auto rewind so obviously I've reached the end of the film. I'll take the film out when I get home, I'm not going to do it here. I'll take the camera off. So I'll take this home now. I'll either develop it tonight or probably tomorrow morning. Uh, that's it, let's see what the results are.